welcome back. This is part two of uh, different methods and concept for harvesting wind energy. The learning objectives for uh, part one were mostly on the theory uh, part and, and uh, to know that, uh, that the lift, lift uh, driven uh, machine is, is more efficient than the drag one. But, but this, uh, le this lecture two will be more diving into some, some uh, real examples of how a, a few unconventional wind energy extraction devices work. And uh, with that, having applied this, uh, these tools, you will be able to list um, the basic elements and performance determination of any wind energy extraction device. So, I'd like to show you some examples. This is my interpretation of how a horizontal axis wind turbine looks. Three-bladed upwind turbine, the wind comes in here. Turbine moves anti-clockwise. We look at the radial position R here. And when we cut, cut up along here, then we see an airfoil. It moves this way, and the wind comes in here. So the velocity triangle is this, so the relative velocity that the airfoil experiences is here. And you may notice this actual induction here, which is uh, explained in the uh, rotor aerodynamics uh, le lesson, so I will not go into that. But it just goes to say that the velocity in the rotor plane is a little bit lower, or somewhat lower, than the free stream wind speed. But still, you have a velocity triangle, and then you have lift acting a per perpendicular to the relative velocity drag in the direction of it. The total force here, and you project that down so you have a driving force. So the driving force is in the same direction as the motion. And that means that you have a power, positive power out. And as you can see from the, the vectors here, it's lift driven. If, you, if, if the drag gets larger, the force tilts back and it doesn't work anymore or if you don't have a lift. So this is a lift-driven concept. Let's look at a vertical axis wind turbine. This is a gyro mill. And uh, in this case, the turbine moves around like this, uh, along a, uh, around a vertical axis in the middle. The wind comes in here. And now we cut up at one section here. This is airfoils, leading edge, trailing edge. They go around like that. And if we look at the situation uh, on the rear side of the of the turbine. Let's say the wind in this section, the wind comes in from left to right. So this is the wind speed. This is the relative speed due to the rotation of the turbine. So the relative total, total relative speed, wind speed meeting the airfoil is here. So we have a lift and drag and also a driving force in the same direction as the motion of the blade. We have the same situation on the upstream surface. Now the relative speed from the motion is there, the wind speed is here, so the relative vector, wind vector is here, so lift is here, drag is there, and still there's a, a, a driving force in the same direction as the motion. So we get positive power out here, it's dri driven by lift. And then of course there's a situation on the, up, uh, on the stroke where the, the airfoil goes into the wind and away from the wind, that costs a little bit, but it's driven by by lift on the front and back side. Okay, a third concept could be uh, yet another vertical axis uh, machine. You may have seen devices like that. Take an oil can, open it, offset it, it can turn. Uh, I'd like to show it like that because uh, this is what I showed earlier. This has a very high drag coefficient. You have an open sphere this way and the other way on the other side. So if wind comes here, this has larger drag than that because of the opening. So this would want to turn uh, like that. So if we cut it up along the, the, the green line here, you will have a situation like that. This is the wind. This is the cup that is open over here to the right. And so when it rotates, that actually means that the relative velocity over here gets a bit smaller because it rotates. So this one where you actually don't want any drag has a higher relative velocity. So when you look at the forces, which are equal to the drag in this case, it, it needs to have a somewhat higher drag coefficient on this part than on that because it has to overcome the, the, the smaller uh, velocity. So this is a drag-driven concept. And uh, if, if you didn't have this one over here, this would be exactly the same as the drag-driven cart. 
the same expression you would have. But now you have the added cost of the, you have to bring the other part over. So this the, the power performance of this one would be somewhat lower than, than that of the, the, the drag cart. So the last uh, example I want to show you here is uh, that uh, where we use a kite uh, to generate power. And uh, so this is a side view of how it looks when you are standing with a stationary kite. So the kite is just attached to the ground here. Everything is steady state. We have wind, we have lift and drag and total force here as the sum of these two. That force aligns with the tether because it's a steady state and this doesn't weigh much. So what you may have experienced if you tried out kites yourself is that you can get a much, more la much larger force in the tether by not just having the kite standing still, but if you move it so that the kite eigen uh, motion uh, results in a much larger velocity for the kite and then the forces can go much larger. So if we look at that situation from above, so now we changed viewpoint, we look at the situation from above and now the kite is not hanging high up, but you have, you're moving perpendicular to the wind at a position where the kite is just uh, directly downstream of you. So it's, it's uh, you are here holding the kite and the kite is moving up now in this view. So the relative speed of the air seen from the kite is VK because of its own motion. The wind speed is V infinity there. So the relative speed observed by the kite is that. The lift is perpendicular to it, the drag is there and the force is aligned with, with the tether uh, for this, uh, in, in this steady state situation here of constant velocity. So what we have here is that this velocity is much larger than that and forces scale with velocity squared. So this force is much, much larger than the one that was there if we was just standing. So now we have a very high force in the tether. So we can get power out of that if we just put the tether on a drum and unroll it a little bit. This means that the speed felt here is now a little bit smaller because the relative speed of the kite, the kite is moving a little bit outwards. Um, but still, this velocity is much larger than the, the wind speed. And the way we calculate the power is the tether force times the reelout speed. And you can show that the ideal reelout speed is actually a third of the wind speed. And then you can see that also for this case, which is also lift driven, uh, the, 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 the power scales with density, with area, with a wind speed cubed, with the, and then with lift times lift to drag squared, just like uh, the lift cart. So this is just an alternative way of using the forces in the wind to extract wind power. And all of these ways use the same tools that I've shown you. Uh, to and then you just have to apply them differently. So with this, I'll jump to the summary. In this lecture, you have learned uh, the basic elements and performance determination of any wind energy extraction device. And we have also used those to explain how several unconventional wind energy extraction devices work. I hope you enjoyed it.